first. In the past half an hour, a man has been found guilty here in the UK of murdering Metropolitan Police Officer Matt Ratner, who was shot in the chest inside a South London police station. Uh, Louis de Soysa used an antique revolver which he'd smuggled into a holding cell at Croydon Custody Centre to shoot Sergeant Ratner back in 2020. Uh, he was handcuffed at the time. Well, the case uh, was heard at Northampton Crown Court and our correspondent, Francis Reid, is there. Uh, Francis, just bring us up to date with what happened. Yes, as you said, in the last half hour, we've had that guilty verdict. It took the jury some approximately five, day, uh, five uh, hours sorry, to uh, deliberate that verdict. As we said, it was back in uh, September 2020 that 25-year-old, now 25-year-old, uh, Louis de Zoyza was stopped as part of a routine search before he was uh, taken uh, to a police station. And it's there he was able to uh, discharge the shots from this antique revolver. Let's Let's have a little look back on the case now with Daniel Sanford. You're walking down the road with a duffel bag, all right, which I, which I believe may have stuff going to equip to do a burglary. What right? started as a routine stop in the early hours of a Friday morning ended with the killing of a police officer. In that bag... Um, Quite quickly, is Louis de Zoyza admitted uh, he had drugs on him. Non-medical... Uh, Cannabis. But PC Rich Davy then found seven rounds of ammunition. I'm right. placing you under arrest okay. for possession of bullets. But despite a lengthy search, the officers somehow missed the antique revolver secreted in a holster under his left arm. In the van, de Zoyza moved the gun from the holster into his hands, still cuffed behind his back. At the custody suite, Sergeant Matt Ratner, who is in charge, ordered a search with a metal detector. But at that point, Louis de Zoyza produced the gun from behind his back and shot Sergeant Ratner in the heart. Welcome to East Grinstead Rugby Football Club. I'm Matt Ratner, head coach. Matt Ratner was originally from New Zealand. A keen rugby player and coach, he was the son of a Maori father and a Scottish mother. His brother, James Young, says that when he'd finished school, Matt went to America on a tennis scholarship. We thought he was going to be a tennis champ and win US Opens, but no, he didn't. He went and became a cop. <laughs> he went to England in 91. Matt Ratner served almost 30 years in the Metropolitan Police and was three months from retirement. He's never coming back. Why? Tell me why. His brother, who has a criminal record in New Zealand and has spent time in police stations and prisons, can't believe the Metropolitan Police allowed a gun into a custody suite. What they've told us, if they change the procedures and all these sorts of things, they've got metal detectors where you walk in through now. I'm like, well, they've got those in the police stations here. They've had them for years. The two officers who searched Louis de Zoyza have been defended by their force. The officers, once they searched him on the street, they, Louis de Zoyza always remained in handcuffs. When the ammunition was found on him on the street, the handcuffs were moved from a front position to a back position. They've been praised for how they tackled the gunman during the shooting. He shot himself in the neck in the struggle and barely survived. The two arresting officers, I think without, without any thought, instinctively jumped on de Zoyza to try and wrestle the firearm away and get it off him. De Zoyza is permanently brain damaged. He can barely talk. In court, he used a whiteboard to communicate. He has autistic spectrum disorder, but had a successful school career and learnt to shoot with the army cadets. On the farm where he lived alone, he used his engineering skills to make the non-standard bullets for the 19th century revolver he'd bought online. He also purchased a holster to conceal the gun. It's not clear why he was near his parents with a firearm that night, but he had a bad relationship with his father, who has convictions for domestic violence. His lawyers argued that the shooting was the result of an autistic meltdown, but the jury decided it was murder. Daniel Sanford, BBC News, Northampton. Well, as 
As we heard there, Sergeant Ratner's brother, James Young, as you heard there, um, paying tribute to him, but also questioning how it was possible, really, that a revolver could get into a police station um, and you know, do what he do what uh, he did with it. The Met obviously praised its officers there. But we put some of these questions to the Met Police. Let's hear from Stuart Cundy. I, like most people, have always asked the question, how could it possibly have occurred that a man who was on the streets of London with a gun has been able to shoot a police officer, in essence, within the confines of a police station in, in one of our, in one of our custody, custody suites. The devastating impact that has had on Matt's partner, Sue, and his family and his colleagues is, is, is absolutely immense. And perhaps uniquely, and certainly for me, in all of my time in policing and all the investigations I've undertaken or been responsible for, very quickly, I and my colleagues in the investigation knew exactly what occurred because we had all of the events, both on body-worn video, on CCTV from the van, and indeed CCTV from the custody suite. So we were able to quickly identify the full events, this, this chain of events that led to such a, such a terrible and a tragic outcome. And uh, we've just got uh, a couple of extra details about what was happening uh, in court just to uh, bring you, just before I go back to Francis, uh, the judge uh, there thanked the jury for its deliberations, as is customary, and said it had, quote, fulfilled an onerous but critically important public duty. And the prosecutor, Duncan uh, Penny Casey, told the court that further firearms and ammunition charges faced uh, by de Soysa will be allowed to lie on file at a sentencing hearing at the uh, same court next uh, month. Right, let's go back to Francis now. Francis, just uh, give us a bit more detail about how this trial was actually conducted, because it's relatively unusual. Yes, it was relatively unusual, and that's because of Louis de Zoyza's, uh uh, condition and the fact that his injury stemming from that uh, gunshot wound that he self-inflicted on that fourth shot that was released um, in the police station, uh, it meant that all the trial had to be conducted incredibly simply. Um, so very simple language um, and very uh, when the judge was la laying things out, everything had to be done very, very simple, very, very uh, simple sentences from the judge, uh, from the prosecution, from the defence. So that it could all be understood. That's not necessarily usual in court, uh, but that was what was requested in order, order to give a fair trial, because, you know, obviously the defence was claiming uh, that diminished responsibility um, originally. Uh, from, uh, for that. Francis, thank you very much uh, for that. We'll be back with you a little later.